Hey there, it's Professor S. In the next five minutes or so, I want to continue talking about chemical reactions, picking up where I've left off, but playing off of what I've discussed recently. So let's see, I've talked about synthesis reactions, uh, decomposition reactions, and then I've also talked about the concept of reversibility and chemical equilibrium. What I want to do in this video is introduce two more reaction types that are fairly important in biology, and they're reactions that are effectively combinations of synthesis and decomposition to achieve particular outcomes. Now, in this first reaction, we're going to start with these two particles, the blue one by itself and then the two brown ones that are connected. I'm going to mess with them. I'm not exactly going to break anything down. I'm not exactly going to build anything. Uh, let's just see what happens. So this type of reaction that we just saw is what's called an exchange reaction. In an exchange reaction, atoms or groups of atoms are exchanged between two partners like this. I have two of these molecules in front of me. I have a black one and I have a blue one with a white ball. And if I transfer the white ball from blue to black, they have swapped a partner. Nothing's really gotten bigger. Nothing's really gotten smaller. We just swapped partners. In fact, to do that, you had to have a decomposition reaction first, followed by a synthesis reaction to make the whole thing work. The places in biology where we see exchange reactions happen are not always obvious, but one of the most important places we see it is with protein synthesis, because the way in which proteins are actually synthesized is the amino acids have to be brought in in exactly the correct order to build the protein, because proteins are amino acid polymers. And so they're transferred from one molecule to another through the ribosome of the cell. It's a whole complex process that will get its own time in videos down the line. Uh, but that's exchange reactions. For this reaction, we're starting with a single reactant. This happens to be a cartoon of the molecule glucose. And uh, I'm just going to fiddle around with this molecule, and we'll see what we get out the other side. So what we ended with in this particular case is fructose. Fructose, which is a six carbon sugar. We started with glucose, a different hexose six carbon sugar. And in fact, glucose and fructose have the same molecular formula. What we saw here is what's called an isomerization reaction, a chemical reaction in which bonds are both broken and formed, decomposition and synthesis occur, to rearrange the bonds within a particular molecule to keep the same parts, but put them together in a new way to produce a molecule it's called an isomer. I actually have a couple videos on isomers that you might want to look at if you're not familiar with isomers already. Isomerization reactions form isomers. They rearrange bonds within a molecule. This is particularly important in metabolic activity in cells. A lot of cellular metabolism includes isomerization reactions to rearrange bonds to get substances in the right format to draw energy out of them. And so there you have two more reaction types, the exchange reaction and the isomerization reaction. that I'm just seriously nerdy. I think I'm, I'm better for, for that. Oh, you may have been a huge nerd once, but you just aren't that nerdy anymore. What does that even mean? I mean, come on. I'm obviously a science geek. Uh, I played video games a little. Um, I played RPGs back in the day. Look, none of that matters. You're just not as big a nerd as you think you are. You mean I'm as big a nerd as I think I am? Who are you to tell me what is and isn't nerd? That's a Hawkins Middle School AV Club hoodie, isn't it? 
Mm-hmm. And a Dungeon Master's Guide? Yep. This is Professor S. If you found that video useful, there are a couple others that you might enjoy as well. Don't forget to hit the button and subscribe. <laughs>